This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, again, I apologize for the late start, but we are gathered here on a very special Sunday. Uh, the first thing I need to do is a word came to me, and I posted it on the Facebook page, but not everybody has access to the computer, uh, and that is the death of Carol Burks. Um, Carol had suffered a stroke and uh, just simply was not going to come out of it, and then uh, it just complicated issues. So she passed away on the 28th. I posted her obituary, but much like we did with Don, uh, there is no visitation. It'll simply be a private graveside uh, service at a later date. We haven't even begun to uh, go into that. The other thing I was asked to announce is that property committee is planning to meet on Tuesday at uh, seven o'clock and uh, all interested parties in the well-being of our building are invited to come and be a part of it. I hope everything was safe and, uh, and went well for you on uh, New Year's Eve. And here we are now in 2022. So without further ado, those are the things that I have for you. Uh, does anyone else have anything to share for the good of the congregation? Now would be a good time to make mention. All right. Well, thanks be to God that we are gathered at this time and in this place. Let's take a moment and prepare ourselves to worship the Lord. stand and join with me for the confession and forgiveness as printed in your bulletins. <clears throat> Pardon me. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, who sends the word with angels, who is made flesh among all peoples, and who breathes peace to all the earth. Amen. In Christ we are bold to name our sin and cry out for peace. Holy God, we confess our sin before you. We replace compassion with competition. We seek what is mighty while ignoring the need. We are quick to anger but slow to forgive. We have not put on love in harmony with you. Wrap us in the grace of your powerful word. Swaddle our hearts with your peace. 
that all we do in word and deed may reflect your love born among us. Amen. I bring you good news of great joy for all people. God has come among us in the child born of Mary, Christ the Lord. And in Christ, your sins are forgiven, and you are clothed in peace. Amen. And now we sing. because it crosses all three of the liturgical cycles. And yet, it is the power of the word of the gospel that comes to us. The power of the word of the gospel is the incarnation gospel. And we're going to get to that in a moment. But these two readings lead us toward that. And it is one of the most well-planned out uh, set of readings that, uh, that a preacher could have. So we begin with a, uh, the word from the prophet Jeremiah in the 31st chapter beginning at the, second, at the seventh verse. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together, a great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations, I will lead them back. 
I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say that he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from the hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from St. Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus. It is the opening of the uh, letter of Ephesians in the first chapter. And the apostle writes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ, before the foundation of the world to be a hope to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed upon us in the beloved one, in him. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him things in heaven and things on earth. Now in Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I now invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. And this is the Holy Gospel for the second Sunday of Christmas, according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the life of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Now there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, 
but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, and yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And that word became flesh and lived among us. We have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. The Incarnation Gospel is only recorded in the fourth gospel, in John's gospel. And this is not without intentional purpose. Um, John of the four uh, evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John, is the latest. In other words, there had already been the story, the stories that, that Luke told to a primarily Greek audience have been uh, distributed. John's probably familiar with them, as were many of the people. In Matthew's Gospel, that was geared mostly toward uh, those of Jewish descent, uh, had also been distributed and shared. And Mark, the first of the four evangelists, was, was already in place and functioning even before Matthew and Luke composed theirs. John is the latest of them. In other words, there's already become somewhat of a, of a theology emerging. And John's entire gospel is a reflection of this prologue. There are those uh, who who say that the Gospels are primarily a resurrection narrative with a lengthy introduction, that everything culminates in the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And that's all well and good. But I think it's important for us, those who are, if you will, the remnant, those who have remained consistently through this, to hear the power of God's holy word, this becomes for us the beginning of everything that is to follow this year. And so it's important that we take a careful look at this. And there's no better place to begin than with the three Old, simple statement that comprises the first verse of this incarnation gospel. In the beginning was the Word. First and foremost, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. Finally, in the Word was God. With those three simple phrases in mind, 
we set the stage for what Christmas is all about. It is still the Christmas season. By the way, what do they have? Nine, nine, nine ladies dance? What, what's the 12 days of Christmas? Um, on the first day of Christmas, my true. This is the ninth day of Christmas. Nine ladies dancing. Anybody remember? I don't remember it, but I probably should have looked it up before I threw it in here, but it was just something that leaped to mind. There are, that, that song, the 12 days of Christmas, have a reason, because there are 12 days of Christmas. Christmas Day on the 25th and so on through the 5th of January. So the 5th of January happens this week. The 6th of January is always the epiphany of our Lord, and that begins the epiphany season. But we begin here in this Christmas season with simple statements, in the beginning was the Word. Those first three words. What are the first three words of the entire Bible? Oh yeah, from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created. It's with that simple opening phrase that John begins to build his... I don't like to use the word case because it's like it, it's trying to convince us in some sort of a... A debate, but, but John begins to fulfill his calling and his purpose. In the beginning was the Word, at the very beginning of everything. And as we know from Genesis, there was chaos. But in the beginning was the Word. How did God create the universe? Whether it was in seven days as described exactly like the Bible tells us, or whether it is something that has evolved over the course of the last however many billions of years since the Big Bang Theory, whatever those sorts of things do for you in your mind, God spoke creation into being. In the beginning was the Word. And that word that spoke creation into being was not alone. And that's what John wants to emphasize. But the very first thing we have is the origin of everything. And that is in the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. You see, that's the second step. We have the origin spoken. The beginning is the word. Now we have the identity of that word, for that word was with God. Now in this Christmas season, of course, we're emphasizing all the cuteness and cuddliness, if you will, of a of a manger scene, the baby laying in the manger and all of that and all the wonderful songs. But the truth be told, there is much more to that. This word that was with God at the very beginning is now in our midst and among us. The word was with God. John goes on, all things came into being through him. Without him, uh, not one thing came into being. In this one, this word with God came all things. So we not only have the origins on the one hand, but we have the identity of that word. The identity of that word, of course, we know is Jesus Christ. The one of whose, whose birth we just celebrated last weekend. That one who came to be with us and among us with the purpose and the mission 
to save God's people, to usher in what, what Jeremiah had prophesied, sing aloud with gladness, make joyful noise, all of these things. They've been sent out, they've been dispersed, I'm going to bring them back together again, and I'm going to do so in this one. And everyone will rejoice, and everyone will be filled. It's what the Apostle Paul was writing about in the book of Ephesians, when he talked about he destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ according to his good will. It is the purpose of this one who comes to fulfill that promise among us. Even to this very day, the word that was with God, here's the key thing, the word was God. Imagine that. Imagine a God who creates us who gives us life itself, now wants to come in person to identify with us fully. We meager little human beings. The power of that word that can create a universe, the power of that word who is identified as that one savior to come with us, to be with us, who is with God, is now revealed as God himself. His birth was the life of all things. Now, does that mean prior to that all things were dead? Well, as far as matters of faith are concerned, yes, the world was created. And it came into being. But it was like journeying through this, this maze of life. And many things that were done were things that were given as part of the promise. But the hope, the life, the light came through Jesus. That light which shined in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it, brought to us the lightness, the purpose, the meaning of why we are here. You see how all of this, from the birth of a baby at Bethlehem to that one who rises again and says, Lo, I am with you to the close of the age, is that one who is there from the beginning, from our very origins, to, to identify God to us and for us, and then to bring that word to life so that we too could have life, life abundant and life forever. This opening prologue, if you will, of John, the Incarnation Gospel, is filled with the promise and hope of Christmas, although nowhere in John's Gospel does it identify any stories about the birth of Jesus. And yet, it's all about Jesus, the light of the world. John's purpose, John the Baptist, this evangelist is telling us, came as a witness to testify to the light. John was sent with a mission. And that's our mission. There was a man sent from God, a woman sent from God, whose name was, you fill in the blank with your name, who came as a witness to testify to the light so that others, too, might believe. That doesn't make you and me the light, but we come as witnesses to offer our testimonials, to testify to the light, the true light that enlightens everyone. 
through this opening of John's Gospel, you and I have revealed for us our origin in the Word, our identity as one who through that Word have been with God from the beginning and there we shall be in the end also offers for you and me our purpose, the purpose to be united with God once and forever. And yet, being human, we have one more thing to cover. And that's where you and I can identify most with John. We are put in the face of the earth to testify to that light, to live our lives according to the promises that enlighten us each and every day, to know that on those days that, that we fail to get up early enough to anticipate iced automobiles and get them going early enough to start worship on time, that even when we fall short, there is one who brings us the light back, who brings us back from that remnant, within that remnant, to bring once again the true light that lightens. And from that fullness of Christ, we have received grace upon grace, a free gift, the empowerment to speak the truth in love, to bear witness to the light so that others may see and others may know that Jesus Christ, born of Mary, in a manger in Bethlehem, the true light walks with us and is testified through us that Jesus has come to save the entire world. All of this happened once in the city of David. We have had revealed to us Christ, our Savior, who is born for you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's join together and sing our hymn of the day, once in Royal David's decision.
Having heard the word, prayed our response through song, now let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Ever-present God, even as you were there when light and dark were first called forth, be ever present with your church, enabling it to be creative in its proclamation of the word. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Generous creator, in you all things came into being, and without you not one thing exists. We praise you for the snow, the sleet, the rain that water the earth. Move us to care for the well-being of the work of your hands. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Savior of the nations, you gather in your you gather in your people of every age and ability lands near and far, inspired leaders of nations to work for peace within their countries and throughout all the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for all who journey in the wilderness of grief, despair, and sickness. Especially we lift before you this day, Jay and Roberta, Nancy, Eileen, Dana, Jeannie, Danielle, and those whom we name in our hearts. Transform their mourning to dancing. Give them gladness for their sorrow and guide us in ministering to those who call upon you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Shine your light through this faith community into the wider community. Make us a beacon for all who hunger and thirst for righteousness and all who are in need of mercy. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Gracious one, your light shines in the darkness and it is not overcome. We thank you for the witnesses who have testified to your light, especially Carol Burks, whom we mourn today. 
May those lives continue to inspire us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. The rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. And we turn our attention now to the greatest gift the church has to offer, the grace, forgiveness, and love displayed for us through the consecrated bread and wine. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and our friends. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. In the wonder and the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to the God whom we cannot see. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending words of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. So, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, ever and ever. Amen. In Christ's manger, at Christ's table, come and see what God makes known for you. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. And I invite you to open your communion gift. And in that, of course, you will find the little steps we've been using. And most of you have been here and you know, but I'm going to explain it anyway as a good practice. There are two ends to that device. One end, the smaller end inside, holds a piece of bread. You can pull the cover off, remove the bread. And now take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Turn it over, and there is a second covering that covers the liquid portion, the wine, that is contained therein. And now take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you.
Now I invite you to stand to receive the communion and blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, wondrous God, for Jesus, God with us, in these gifts of bread and wine. As we have shared this feast of love, strengthen us to share your love with all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now, dear friends, may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh. Amen. We share together in our closing hymn, Love Has Come. Savior. Thanks be to God.